Okay, so it's been a long time since I did a video. The last one was August 29th of 2022 when I did my uh, 25th installment of an action tutorial uh, series for the 8-bit computer. And then I just kind of uh, hit a wall. <laughs> so there were things I wanted to do, but I just, uh, they required setup work that I didn't want to, that wasn't appealing to me. And I just kind of hit a wall. And so I was looking for a way to get back inspired to do videos again and decided maybe I just need a new tack. And that is to come back with a brand new series of which this will be like episode one. And this will be on uh, programming in assembly language on the Atari 8-bit computer using the Mac 65 cartridge. So the goal of this series will be kind of twofold. One is to uh, teach assembly language on the Atari. Um, but the other part of that goal will also be to how to get the best use out of the Mac 65 cartridge. It's really one of the best uh, assembly development environments for the 8-bit. And um, and I want to show its full uh, full use, you know, how you can get the most out of it. So this first video, we're just really going to be setting the ground rules, but I will do a little tiny bit of assembly programming at the end. Um, so let's talk about, I actually have three versions of Mac 65. I have uh, this four-in-one cartridge. This is also actually my action cartridge. <laughs> There's uh, um, jumpers on the back of this, so depending on which jumpers are installed, it's either Mac 65 or Action or Basic XL or Basic XE. And this version is the actually the most current uh, Action or Mac 65 version I have. It's 3.6 from January of 88. I also have One on my uh, ultimate cart. So I also have action on here. I have the Atari Assembler Editor. And I have Mac 65 version 102. And this has the, uh, I don't know, fancy dark blue background. <laughs> and then I finally I have... This one, which I got off of, uh, I don't know, Etsy, Macari, one of those. And that's version 101. Now, I was looking on the Mac 65 wiki page. I really couldn't see any place that specifically called out what great new features or better features you're getting in version 102 or 1 um, or 3.6. So uh, in going with my theme of least common denominator, we're going to use this version, the 1.01 version. You can get these, uh, you know, they're all cartridge files you can get out there uh, on the internet. So I'm using an original Atari 800 with 48K. Um, no emulators, no PCs, uh, strictly a stock 800 with a FujiNet and a Mac 65 cartridge with a, a, a SpartaDOS hard drive set up on my FujiNet to store code on. Because I'm using the Atari 800, I won't really be getting into specific uh, features for the XL or the XE, uh, like swapping banks of memory to get to the, you know, extra memory that's there, or some of the extra instruction sets in the 65 CO2 processor that some of the later Atari 8-bits had. 
Uh, everything we're going to be doing will be just a regular stock 6502 processor, which is the same one that's actually used in the Apple uh, II series of computers and the Commodore 64, VIC-20, 128 uh, computers, as opposed to like the Z80 processors that were in uh, a TRS-80 and the uh, Timex Sinclair and so forth. So we're going to be doing 6502 assembly. A lot of the instructions here you can just take and uh, translate right to a Commodore or an Apple, but uh, of course, the memory locations would be totally different. You know, the hardware is different. So that's the, um, for the most part, I am going to try to not do a lot of con uh, referencing back to the action videos. Uh, like, I'm not going to force you to go watch them to cover some topics. So if you've seen the action videos, as this goes on, you may see me duplicate some topics that I've already talked about in the action series. So if there's some duplication of topics, uh, you know, forg forgive me in advance. Um, we're going to be kind of doing like I did with the action, is that I'm only going to teach a little bit at a time, just as much as you need to know to do whatever I'm doing in that video. Um, so like when I talk about load accumulator instruction in assembly language, I'm not going to talk about all the 15, seven or eight different addressing modes there are and, uh, stuff like that until we come to them or we need them. So we're just going to learn, uh, things as we need them. I'm going to recommend that you... Uh, download some materials or that, or I'll talk about some that I find handily. Um, I will include a link in the description of this video that has a uh, list of where you can find all these things in a PDF format. Atari Mania has almost all of them. Uh, the first thing you would definitely kind of want to get is the uh, Mac 65 manual. I don't have an actual one. I downloaded this off Atari Mania and printed it. Um, the next thing you're going to uh, want, and probably if you have these two things, you're pretty good. Uh, mapping the Atari. It can be the old version of this book or the new version. Since, again, those common denominator, we're not going to be doing anything that isn't in this first book. So it doesn't matter which one of these books you have. <laughs> or the PDF, as it were. Then another handy thing to download, again, I don't have a physical copy of this, super expensive right now, but Atari Roots. What's good about this book is, A, it teaches how to do Atari assembly language, and also uh, it tells you how to use Mac 65. Now, I will say that it uses Mac 65 off of uh, disk, the first edition, trying to hold this steady, um, but it's still a great book, and you'll be able to follow along, um, you know, the book if you have a Mac 65 cartridge. Next book I, I recommend is this, Machine Language for Beginners. Now, it also says Atari, Vic, Apple, Commodore, Pet, right? But this is actually a really uh, good book because of... Uh, tells you how to do certain common programming structures in assembly language. It has a pretty good Atari memory map at the back if you don't want to struggle through the whole book of um, mapping the Atari to find one location. So even though it's like a general purpose book, it's really next to Atari Roots. It's my favorite uh, assembly language book. And then the last two things I would recommend is um, this is a pretty good book, not as critical as the other ones before it. I have some good reference tables in it. Um, you can download the PDF of this. And then, of course, this ubiquitous book that probably if you have an 8-bit, <laughs> you, you've seen this before. So your Atari computer, again, 
Doesn't matter if it's the old version or the updated XLXC version, because everything we're going to do would be covered by what's in this book. So that's, again, what you should kind of use. Oh, and there's one other thing. In uh, Analog Magazine, starting in issue 13, that's uh, this one here. Analog with that cool uh, 1400 XL on the cover is a series in, and again, you could download these all off the computer called Boot Camp by uh, Tom Hudson. It's a very good Atari uh, assembly. He did like 21 columns or something like that. So it was a monthly column. That's also pretty good reference. So, uh, but the most important thing is this. The Mac 65 book and the uh, mapping the Atari. So those are the real crucial ones. All the others are. Uh, I'm going to go back to DOS here for a minute just because I want to. Uh, and uh, one. Who knows what time it is right now, so I'll just say it's uh, uh, 10.30. That's so when I do some saving, it'll put the time date stamp on it. And I've set up on, this is my, D2 is basically my uh, programming a uh, hard drive, so I have directories for everything. We're going to go to the Mac 65 directory and then go into the cartridge. All right, so let's talk about the cartridge first. And how is it different from the Action cartridge or the basic cartridge? I will do some comparison here. So the Mac 65 editor is more like an Atari uh, basic editor than it is like the action editor. And what that means is um, the action editor, you can type whatever you want and the editor doesn't care. Uh, but Mac 65 actually has a, a syntax checker. So uh, when you're at a prompt like this, the edit prompt, you really only can type in two things. You can type in a command to the Mac 65 cartridge, and there's only 21 of them, and we'll probably talk about at least half of them tonight in the first video. Uh, so uh, you can either type in a command to Mac 65, or uh, you can put in a line number and put in a line of assembly code. Those are the only two things you can really do is if you try to put anything else, the syntax, or syntax checker will complain about it. So it's either a line of code or an instruction. So uh, uh, there's only 21 instructions for the Mac 65 editor. It's always in what we call overwrite mode, right? So uh, there's no way to go into insert mode. You have to would have to use control insert. But it does allow, um, you know, your regular screen editor things. Because assembly language is an assembled language where you um, write a program and then you compile it and then you run it. There's no such thing as uh, immediate instructions like there is in BASIC. You know, like in BASIC where you can say print X and it'll, you know do execute that command. You can not do that in the Mac 65. You can only put in the 21 different commands. So let me talk about uh, the ones that briefly, the ones that you're never going to use, or I don't think you should use. One is you can go into a text mode, but it's totally useless. To get out of text mode, or to clear your memory, uh, there is new. Okay, new will either uh, clear your memory or put you back into edit mode. 
uh, line numbers start with 10. There's also a feature called num. So this will do some uh, This will do some automatic numbering for you, but I actually uh, don't recommend using this. So uh, don't use num. Uh, the reason why is because um, you'll be coding and then you realize, oh, I got to put some line in here. And then you want to go in the middle somewhere. And, uh, you know, I, I, I needed to put a line at 150 and... Uh, and then what does it do? It doesn't know where to do the renumbering. Um, what you can do is put in any line numbers you want, and then at the end you can do renumber, which we'll talk about if we ever renumber a program. So uh, don't use text and don't use edit. New will clean things out. Uh, and the regular, uh, the regular Atari. Um, Screen editor commands will work here. Um, so let's talk about writing a program. Uh, assembly language is super fussy, and the Mac 65 is fussy about spacing. It counts spaces. So if you have one space, and you start typing, that will be considered uh, a label. If uh, you use uh, uh, a semicolon, uh, uh, that would be a comment. So anything that uh, comes after one space is considered a label or a comment. Two spaces. So after the first space, you can put a label. After the second space, you can put uh, an instruction, an assembly instruction, which we'll start talking about, or you can put in a directive to the compiler, which is basically an instruction to the compiler to uh, take some action. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. So I could say, uh, Now, a common mistake is to uh, forget that you need the two spaces, and so you put in some assembly language instruction with only one space, and it will complain because, hey, it thinks it's a label. But if you type list, you'll see that these instructions are pushed out here. Oh, this instruction is uh, not pushed out. I accidentally put that in the label thing. And like uh, Atari Basic, if you want to erase a line, you can just do this. So uh, you can use that to erase a line. Uh, the third space, so, and ironically, when you're typing, your program, like up here, right? You want two spaces, but when it lists it back out to you, it puts in a whole bunch of spaces. So, uh, you know. Uh, oh, and the other thing is... I can use lowercase... Uh, But Mac 65 will always take lowercase and interpret it back to uppercase. So 
Uh, the only time it will not change back to uppercase is with a comment. Uh, all right, so we've seen list. We see how to enter some things. Uh, this is actually what I'm typing here is the start of a familiar program that we used in um, uh, the action series of videos where I didn't feel like the blue screen with the white text was the best to uh, video. So we actually wrote a little action routine in one of the videos to show how to intercept the reset key and to push the margin out to the zero space and to set the background to black with white text for the better contrast. So, so two spaces is an instruction. Oh, let me go back to uppercase. Then third space is um, a third space is a operand or argument or uh, this instruction has an uh, an operand. So this is we'll get to it later. It's load the accumulator, and this says what to load the accumulator with. This just says push the stack pointer or push the uh, contents of the accumulator. And I know I'm talking about all these words. We'll discuss what they all are later. But basically says push the contents of the accumulator out onto the stack. So all stuff we'll talk about later. Don't worry. <laughs> but this can this doesn't need any other operand to tell it how to do that. It knows, oh, Take what's in the accumulator and put it out on the uh, stack. The next one where you say load the accumulator, it says, well, what do you want me to load the accumulator with? And there's a lot of different ways to load it. This way, we're just saying load this with the literal number zero so that um, uh, hash tag basically says treat this as a literal value, not a memory address. So this next command says store the accumulator at this memory address, uh, 2C6, uh, 2C6. And then we could also say, uh, right, so this is, uh, again, so two spaces, instruction. Uh, third space is the operand or argument to the instruction, which may or may not be necessary. Note that uh, it's counting spaces. So I can put a label here. That's my second space. That's my instruction, because there's one space, two space, instruction. Now, if this had an argument, then I could put a third space. And I can also write uh, comments anywhere on this line. So if I list this now, uh, you can say see that this is uh, a label and this is an instruction. This is a comment, pushes the comments way out there. All right, so let's start this again. And we're going to, uh, oh, one. there's a real handy thing uh, that the Mac 65 cartridge can do, and that is to use this uh, question mark. So we're going to be using hexadecimal and decimal back and forth. So this question mark is like a built-in hexadecimal uh, converter or decimal to... Uh, hex converter. So if I had that O2C6 and I put that with a question mark, it tells me, oh, that's memory location 710. And if I look that up in the uh, um, all right, so you can see here that 2C6 710 is a uh, color 2 register. And I can also go the other way. 
Note that uh, Mac 65 says, hey, if it's got a um, dollar sign, it's a hexadecimal number. If it doesn't have a dollar sign, it's a decimal number. So it doesn't like it if you put in uh, something with letters. So if I put in O2C6, but I didn't, uh, didn't, didn't put in the a dollar sign first to tell it's hexadecimal, it'll uh, complain about that. All right, so let's write um, a program. We'll talk about some other uh, uh, commands in the uh, Mac 65 cartridge. So two spaces. And then I'm going to actually uh, put this in. Okay, so two spaces. I said this is either going to be a uh, assembly instruction or it's going to be a compiler uh, directive to the compiler to do something special. This is a compiler directive, and this is usually uh, the uh, right asterisk tells you this is the program counter. This is where I'm going to start my program in memory. So unlike basic, unlike action, you can't just write software and let the cartridge take care of where it's going to go in memory. When you're doing assembly language, you have to know where it's going to go. Action, or action, let's see, I'm already used to doing those videos. So Mac 65, here's another command that it has, which is useful. It's called size. And what this does is it says, okay, here's the absolute lowest part of uh, user memory. And this is, hey, th between this value and this value, this is the amount that Mac 65 is using for the, uh, you know, your program, to store your program and anything else. And then this is the very top of memory available. And again, I can use that command to say, hey, so I can go out to like 40,000 bytes and uh, the low one right now is like around 10,000. So when you're writing your program, you can store it anywhere. So you could easily uh, have said, right, which would stick it safely between where Mac 65 is using memory and the top of memory. Um, but if you notice, I used uh, 680, which is uh, down in page 6. So if you're familiar with basic or uh, uh, page 6 is supposed to be user memory. It's like 512 bytes that you can use for your program. It's kind of annoying, but uh, be aware, Mac 65 uses the lower part of page 6. <laughs> Just like Action uses page six, it's really kind of annoying uh, to me. So uh, it uses from 06 to 06, uh, 07 f you know, so it uses from 1536 to uh, 1663 or whatever. But you can still use uh, the, the last half of the, you can use uh, the lower half of uh, page six starting at 680 that's uh that's free for you to use so uh, i'm 
going to stick a label here for now. We're going to come back and change that label. And again, we're going to do the instructions I was showing before. So I, these are instructions, so I use two spaces. Sorry, this... Um, I'll get this uh, camera holder right. Uh, because so the Atari assembler cartridge when you uh, so here's the next command we're going to learn is ASM which is assemble the code that I've written into machine language okay so it thought this was a macro so let's change uh So it will generate uh, assembly errors, which you can look up in the manual. Sorry. Sorry the way this keeps moving. All right. All right, so this gave us a clean compile. Now, in Atari Assembler, it will... Uh, assemble your code right into memory at 680. Uh, the Mac 65 will not do that. You have to explicitly, and here's another command, which we're not going to get into until next video, and that is the Mac 65 cartridge has a built-in tool called DDT, which stands for Dunyan's Debugging Tool, which is super handy. It lets us look at memory. It lets us look at what's in the accumulator, X, Y, registers, the stack pointer, the program counter, etc. cetera. Um, again, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to talk about this until next time. But the important part is if I go to 680, uh, you'll see there's a bunch of junk in there right now, but it's not my junk. So, uh, what I wanted to do what, for the Mac 65 cartridge, an important thing is this, which means uh, I'm exercising the option for you to compile this to object code. So we can do a list, and then we can do an assemble. And again, assembly error is zero. This is how much bytes are free in memory. I'm going to come back and talk about what's actually here in a minute. But if I go to DDT now and I go look at uh, 680, now you see these are the instructions I did, right? Push the accumulator onto the stack, load the accumulator, store it at locations. So put a zero in the accumulator, store it at 710, store it at uh, 82, which is the margin, and then uh, pull the accumulator and return from subroutine. And we'll talk about all these uh, next video. But just to show you the difference here between uh, this line. So they're usually the first two lines in your Mac 65 is going to be, where do I want my program to start in memory? And when you're playing around, use something else like 3,000 or 4,000. You have lots of room out there. Uh, OptoBJ says put it right to memory. And uh, then we have our assembly instructions. So now let's talk about preserving these. So you've seen list. 
you can also do a list to disk drive. And of course, it doesn't want to be like basic, so it uses uh, a hashtag instead of a quote mark. For list files, I use the same extension that I do for um, uh, basic list files, LST. The, and now, now you can see it's gone. And just like basic, the corollary to list is enter. There's also save and load. And this is also like basic. In that what it does is it saves a tokenized version. Uh, so just like if you do a basic save, you can't like dump it in a text editor and make sense out of it. The same thing would be true with the Mac 65 uh, cartridge. You couldn't, um, uh, you know, dump this, but it will save. And then... You can see it's gone, and then you can do load. And for save files, I use M65 for Mac 65, just like you would use BAS for basic. And then uh, you can see it came back again. And then the final thing that we can do is we can say, hey, there's B save, which is binary save. And these are like object files because it's just the machine code. And we do a, a less than sign and we tell it uh, what memory locations to uh, save. But before we do that, let's do the assembly again and talk about that assembly. Okay, so what's here? This is the code I wrote, right? This is the line numbers. Over here is the assembly. This first uh, column has the actual memory locations. We started at 680. This was a one byte instruction that went into 680. This turned about to be two bytes of instructions. Load the accumulator with the value zero. That went in 681 and 682. Then this one actually needed three bytes, so it needed the instruction plus the memory address. You can see again, in the computer it stored low bit, high bit, low bit, high bit. And that went from three, four, five. And then the next one only took two bytes, went into six and seven, a one byte and a one byte. So our program only took up <coughs> 10 bytes of memory from 680 to 689. So I can do that B save. And say, <clears throat> and it only accepts hexadecimal numbers here. It doesn't accept decimal numbers. So you don't have to put the dollar sign. Uh, one of the tricks of Mac 65 is remembering when, you know, uh, when it's there and when it's not there, that you need the dollar sign. In this case, you don't need the dollar sign. And then there's also B load, which works the same way. It loads your program. So I could like turn the computer off, turn it back on, and then type B load, and it would load my assembly code into those memory locations, uh, 680 to 689. There's also, the Mac 65 also has the DOS command, which takes you out to DOS. And you can see, uh, these are the three files that we created. <coughs> Obviously the object file you'd think would only be 10 bytes, but there's a little couple bits of overhead that Max 65 adds in there uh, 
six bytes overhead, which we'll talk about in a future video. Uh, the list file is the biggest, just like it would be in basic, and the tokenized file is uh, kind of small. And one thing we can do, this will work in both Atari Basic and <clears throat> uh, Sparta DOS. As you can say, I assembled my program, and because I had that opt OBJ directive to tell it to assign it right to memory, which we saw with the DDT, uh, it's in memory right now. So I, I can actually tell DOS to hey, go run whatever's sitting in memory code 680. And this is that program that we just wrote, basically, which says, hey, uh, turn the screen color to black and uh, reset the margin to zero. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, I don't have the, I don't have the code to intercept the reset. And I don't want to add that on a, like the very first video. Uh, you'll notice that when we go back to Mac 65, it resets the color from the shadow register. Uh, but it does keep the margin at least, so there's that. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up now. We're going to talk about DDT next time, how to use that. Uh, but we talked about uh, the Mac 65 what uh, books you should be looking at, um, how to use the editor. Uh, we talked about text command, don't use it, number command, don't use it, uh, list and enter, save and load, <clears throat> B save, B load, list, uh, ASM, which means assemble my uh, code, size, Right, you can see now before it was 2507, now it's 252C because it's using up more memory. Uh, and uh, DOS command and DDT command and the uh, question mark command. So there's quite a few commands you can play around with. Uh, you can type in that program in the video and I think I'll wrap it up here. Um, so hopefully this is a decent start and uh, see you in the next video.